I used to work for an electric company a few years ago. We got sent out on a job that was on some back road. We were surrounded by cornfields on both sides of the road. It was actually pretty freaky. My partner and I were quick to jump straight to the Children of the Corn references. We kept the jokes rolling as I geared up and hopped into the bucket. I took the lift all the way to the top of the pole and started examining the wires. Dave was still in the driver's seat of the truck probably letting the supervisor know we were on location, or knowing him, he probably wasn't doing a damn thing. Eventually, he climbed out of the truck and yelled up at me, making it clear that he had to piss as he headed towards the cornfield on the opposite side of the road. I watched him push through the crops and disappear into the field. Now, it's not like I was keeping track of time, but it had been about 20 minutes and Dave hadn't returned yet. So I called out to him, waiting to hear some kind of stupid response but I got nothing back. With as high up as I was, you'd think I'd be able to spot his head or something. But I couldn't even spot where he entered. It all looked the same. I took the lift down and waited another 10 minutes. After calling out to him a few more times, I knew something was up. I couldn't even get back into the truck because Dave had the keys with him when he mysteriously walked off. So I called my boss and told him what happened and that I was stranded. He said he'd have someone out to help me within the next hour. I swear, waiting there in the middle of nowhere, knowing Dave was somewhere out there, was the creepiest shit ever. When help finally arrived, they had a spare key so I could drive the truck back. The other employees seemed as if they weren't really concerned. They just laughed it off and drove away. When I got back to work, I had a talk with my boss, and his theory was that Dave probably quit and walked off. But it can't be that. Something else had to have happened to him. Even to this day, I still haven't heard from him. My parents had just bought me my first car. It wasn't anything to brag about. But since I was the first one in my group of friends to have a car, we were totally excited. I remember I wanted to go on a road trip, just to drive around, so I decided to visit my grandparents, who lived about 45 minutes away. My friends Dan, TJ, and Jalen all hopped in, and I drove off. We must have been about 30 minutes out when my car stalled on us. I panicked because I had no damn clue what it could have been. None of us had any real experience yet. My friends and I made up some bullshit excuses like we knew, until I finally called my dad and explained our situation. I told him our whereabouts and he said he'd be on his way. Things went from bad to worse when it started raining out of nowhere. But there was an underpass nearby so we all ran for it. Shielded from the rain we figured we were good for the time being. The clouds darkened the sky pretty quick and there was barely any light under the bridge so we all used our phones to see around us. We huddled around and tried to make the best of the situation until I saw something not too far from us shuffle around. I got everybody's attention as I shined my phone light in front of me. At first we seen one shadowy figure slowly creep out of view as if it didn't want to be seen. As I tried to follow it with what light I had, we started spotting multiple figures moving around. Dan freaked out as he pointed to our far left. I looked over just in time to see the creepiest person I've ever seen. I couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. They just had long dirty hair with a beat up bruised face. I couldn't even make out what type of clothes they had on because of how ripped up and disgusting they looked. That's when more of these shadowy figures started coming out of the dark, revealing themselves. There had to have been at least seven or eight, and they all looked just as bad as the next. We started backing up as they lunged towards us almost as if they were fucking zombies. 
By this time I had figured out a group of homeless people must have set up a camp under this bridge. And as harmless as it sounds, it was a scary situation to be in. We stepped back out into the rain. I think the worst part was knowing these people were still watching us and hearing them call out to us every few minutes, demanding us to get back in there. My dad finally arrived and I don't think I've ever been happier to see him. Honestly, I can't even remember what was wrong with the vehicle. I don't know why, but I never told him about what happened. My best friend Colton was on Craigslist, trying to sell his old iPhone after buying the newest one. This was pretty much a tradition with him, and I always went with him to meet up with the buyers. Other than a couple people trying to knock the price down, we've never had any bad experiences. Although, there is always that uneasy feeling every time before you meet up in person. This time, we were meeting a guy at a strip mall parking lot. It was his choice as he said it was a good halfway point, so Colton agreed. It was about 15 minutes away according to his GPS, so we got in his F-150 and headed that way. Once we arrived, I started scanning the lot, but I didn't see any other cars. I should mention it was around 9.45 in the evening, so all the stores were closed, and it was pretty dark other than the parking lot lights. At first I thought we were early, but then I noticed a man standing alone by one of the store entrance doors. Colton slowly drove across the parking lot until we were right in front of him. I rolled my window down as he made his way around to my side. He didn't say anything though. He just looked around inside the truck as if he wanted to see how many people we had with us. It was extremely odd. Trying to lighten things up, I jokingly asked him if he walked here. He didn't laugh, smile, or show any sense of humor. Instead, he kept his straight face and told us he parked behind the buildings. It seemed sketchy as hell, but we followed him as he walked around the side of the building, and sure enough, there was a black SUV. Colton pulled up next to it and started chatting with the man. I thought it was strange that he was asking us all these nonsense questions like how we were doing and what we've been up to tonight instead of just exchanging the money for this phone and getting it over with. That's when I heard what sounded like something falling or jumping in the cab of Colton's truck. We had the back window slid open too, so I know for sure I heard something. At first I looked at Colton to see if he heard it too, but he was still too busy talking. Before I could look back, I was caught completely off guard by a barrel coming through the back window. I knew right away it was a shotgun pointed right in my face. I'm not even sure if Colton knew yet, but I heard the man standing outside demand that we give him the phone. That's when Colton looked at me and froze up to the sight of the gun in my face. The man pounded on the door and demanded the phone again, and without hesitation, Colton handed it to him. Then the man took off towards the SUV, and two more guys jumped out of the back of Colton's truck following him. We sat in silence from the terror and shock, not sure what else was going to happen. The SUV drove off out of view, and we still waited. I asked Colton if he wanted to call the police, but he didn't say anything. It was a shitty experience, so I could tell he was traumatized. But he finally got himself together and started his truck back up. As we started driving off, we both instantly realized something more terrifying. He stopped the truck when we both got out. We went around to the back of his truck and noticed that both of his tires had been slit. I didn't waste another second. I called the police and told them everything. They arrived and basically told us this shit happens all the time. But we made it home safe, his car was towed home, and the thieves obviously got away. But what really gets me is Colton still uses Craigslist even to this day.
A friend of mine had invited me to a party he knew about downtown. It was one of those frat house parties and he knew a lot of people attending. Me, on the other hand, I didn't know one person other than my buddy Steven, but he said it was cool because there's always tons of new people showing up anyway. He texted me the address and told me to show up around 8. I got ready for the night and then followed the directions on the GPS to the party. Before I go any further, let me say now that I was only 20 at the time so I couldn't buy my own alcohol. I also wasn't too sure what to expect when I got in because other than a few house parties I've never been to anything like this. I called Steven and he met me out front, then we both walked in the front door. The house was literally shoulder to shoulder packed. I followed Steven as we slowly pushed our way through everybody and into the kitchen where there was wiggle room. Steven started talking to some of the guys standing around and introduced me to them. Then he showed me the famous jungle juice, which I've never heard of before, but I didn't want to seem lame in front of everybody, so I just took a cup. That was a mistake, because I didn't even know what was in it, but after two cups, I was pretty wasted. The rest of the party was a blur until everybody started leaving and Steven told me it was time to head out. We made our way outside and down the street where I parked. That's when I noticed my car was gone. I immediately started to panic. Steven kept asking me if I was drunk and forgot where I parked, but I knew this was the spot. Eventually, a few other people from the party overheard us and asked if everything was good. I told them what happened and they quickly responded by saying cars get broken into and stolen all the time around here and that I should contact the police right away. The problem was I had just been drinking and I'm underage so I was too scared to call the cops. I definitely wasn't about to call my parents and deal with that drama. My only other option was to call OnStar and see if they could track my car's location. They did. The only skeptical thing was they couldn't pinpoint the exact location because of an unknown error. So they sent the last known location to my phone, which happened to only be a few blocks away from where we were. Steven went with me and I'm not gonna lie, it was a creepy ass walk. Being on a part of town I'd never been to, looking for my stolen car. I was expecting the worst things to happen. We got to where the location of my car was supposed to be. There was a dark narrow alley in front of us and we both knew that's where it had to be. We used our phones as light and with caution walked down the alley. The other side was a dead end and my car was nowhere to be seen. It was at that point that I was 100% freaked out and ready for this to be over with. We called the police and explained what happened. After they showed up and we made our report, Steven gave me a ride home. The next few days was a disaster with no car, but the police got in touch with me and they found it. What they told me was probably the most disturbing part of this whole experience. My car was found not too far from that alley, in the backyard of a vacant house. They had no suspects and believed that somebody was using it and hiding it there because they knew it was an empty area. So I wasn't really left with reassurance, just the fact that this can happen to anybody and how easy it is to get away with it.